In this workbook, we have a list of employees, and in the column beside, we've marked an X for the three people who will be on vacation next week. On a schedule sheet, we'd like to select employees to work each day, and if I click here, I can see a list of all the employees. If I go to my list and filter so I only see the people who are available, the schedule drop-down keep showing Al and Cam and Ed, even though they're not visible in that filtered list. We're going to use formulas to create another list that just shows us the people who are available. This is Deborah Dalglish from Contextures.com. The first thing I'll do is quickly set up an employee list that we can use in our schedule. To do that, I'll select all the names. In the name box, I'll type emp list, all one word. And then press enter. And now if I click that arrow, I can see the name that I created. And I'll go to the schedule sheet and I'd like a drop down list here. And it's going to show all those names. To do that, go to the data tab, data validation. To allow, we'll select list. And as the source, click in there and then press the F3 key. Select the list we just created. Click OK and click OK. Each cell now has a drop down and you can select any of the names and that's from the complete list of employees. Next, we'll filter the employee list to just show the people who are available. So I'll go back to the list sheet and click the arrow for vacation. Remove the X check mark and click OK. So these people are not on vacation and that's what we'd like our list to show. But if I go back to the schedule and select the drop down arrow, all the names are still showing. The three that are hidden are still in this list. So we're going to create a workaround that will only show the available employees. The first thing we'll do is add numbers in the employee list. So going back to the list sheet, I'm going to make a new column here called list num. When I press enter, the table will expand automatically. In here, we're going to enter a formula using the subtotal function. The subtotal function ignores rows that are hidden by a filter. So we're going to be able to create numbering just for the visible rows. I'm going to show all the rows again, and we'll start in cell D3 and type an equal sign and then two minus signs. And we use that in a table when we're using subtotal. Otherwise, the table doesn't filter properly. Excel thinks the last row should be a grand total and it always shows that. So two minus signs, then the subtotal function and we want to do a count A, so double click on that, and that will count either text or numbers. So then a comma, and what we're going to count is the text in this employee's cell, and I'm going to type the address there. I don't want to use the table reference, and I want to lock the row. So I'm going to type B, and then a dollar sign, and that will lock the row, so I always want it to start in row three then a colon, and I want it to go down to B3, but I don't lock the row the second time, because when I'm down in B6, I want it to start at B3 and go down to B6. And then close that bracket, and press Enter, and now it's numbered all the rows. But now, if I filter, and hide those X's again, it still keeps sequential numbering. So now it's numbered one through nine. It's ignoring whatever's in those hidden rows. So we're going to be able to use this count to create a new list. I'm going to make the new list on a different sheet. I've called it list DV for data validation. In here, I'm going to type ID as a heading and then emp for employee. I'm going to type a one, enter, 
to select those cells. And we've got 12 employees, so I'm going to drag down. I can see I'm at number 16 now. So as many employees as we have, at least that many, and you can add a few more numbers just in case you add more employees later. And then in this column, we're going to create a formula to find which employee is number one in the list. Before I add the formula, I'm going to change this to a named Excel table. So I'll select one of the cells, go to Format as Table on the Home tab, and click a style. Make sure this box is checked because we have headers and click OK. So now we have a named Excel table and we're going to put a formula in here using index and match. So I'll start with equals index. We'll choose where we want the name to come from. So going back to the list sheet, I'll click the employees column and type a comma. Now back on the list DV, we want to match whatever is in this cell. So I'll start the match function. I'll get rid of this sheet name that Excel helpfully put there for us. Open bracket. The lookup value is the ID and comma. We want to look for that number in the employee list. So we'll go back to the list sheet and it should look in our list num column and a comma, and we want an exact match. So double click that, close the bracket for match and for index. Now I'm going to press enter and we should see an error or two at the end of our list. So everything looks good up top. Check IRA as six and IRA is six. So that's working nicely. It's going to our list, finding all these numbers and returning the name in the employee name column. But now we've got NAs at the bottom and to get rid of those, we'll wrap this formula with if error. So with the first cell selected, if error, open bracket, then go to the end comma and two double quotes, close the bracket and that will put nothing. It will look like nothing in that cell, an empty string, press enter and that gets rid of our errors. Next, we'll create a named range for these names, and it's going to be a dynamic named range, which will adjust as this list changes. We're going to get a count of how many names are in this list, and if we look back at our employee list, these are numbered one to nine, so we want to get the highest number here, and that will tell us how many names to include in our list. So back on this cell, I'm going to use the max function in this cell to get that number. Equals max, open bracket, and going back to my list, click on that column header, and it puts in the list num column name, close the bracket, and press enter. So we'll use this number in our formula when we create this named range. So that named range should start here and go down as many names as we have. So I'm gonna select that cell, then go to formulas, name manager, and we want a new name. I'm going to call this Emp List Avail. And its scope is workbook, and it refers to, it's got that cell where we want the list to start. I'm gonna click at the end and type a colon, and get rid of the address that Excel puts in automatically. We're going to use the index function here to find the end of our list. So I'll type index, open bracket. We want it to return names from this employee column. So click there and comma, and it should go down to the ninth row right now. So click on that cell, close the bracket, click OK. It shows our new name. And if I click down in this refers to, it's selecting the correct range for me. So I'll click close. So we have our new name defined, and next we'll use it for our dropdown. The final step that we have to do is go back to the schedule sheet and fix these dropdowns. Right now, they're showing the full list, and we want to use our new dynamic name to show the list of visible names. 
So I'm going to select all of these cells and clear what's in them right now. Go back to the Data tab, click Data Validation, and in here we've got equals emp list, and our new name is emp list avail. So I'm going to type that, click OK. And now if I select, we're seeing the short list of names instead of the full list. For more Excel tips and tutorials, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.